welcome back to Sunrise Live uh, at uh, the Batchwood Hotel out here in Ekuruleni. Uh, as uh, Mark has correctly said, we are at the Ex ESCOM Young Expo Sciences. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just an exciting world to be, to be involved in this morning. And I was just uh, chatting uh, off air with uh, uh, Pat Tichetti, who is uh, the executive director of uh, the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists, just telling me that over 600 uh, young uh, people are here here today uh, for part of this e expo and we just uh, good morning and thank you for joining us good right morning, Sunrise. Um, 600 kids from across this beautiful country of ours and these are young bright minds uh, it must be an exciting project to work on this is really fantastic it's been going for 37 years we have volunteers that have been with us for three decades and they come back every year they are inspired by what the learners are doing and we rely heavily on these volunteers across the country it's over 300 volunteers across the country so this place is full with lots of adults who are doing it for the learners year after year. What is it that uh, makes it exciting year on? I mean, I know it's, you probably get a new group of students and they're working on new projects and innovation, but as, as ex ESCOM, as you run this project, what is it that, that makes it uh, that exciting? Penny, I think the, the key thing we need to understand is this is the only event of its kind in the country. So it's a unique in a initiative. It is officially um, endorsed by three ministers because they see what we are doing is the right way to go. Now, we are actually creating future scientists and engineers. So what we're doing is investing in our future in these young learners because they are our future. So we have to make sure that we do a, a good job up front because the future of the country relies on them. Over the next 10 to 15 years, they are going to shape what this country looks like. So we better do a good job up front. So how far, does, uh, how far do you get involved with, with the process? I'm just thinking a, a teacher standing in front of the class and saying, guys, you know, you have to do this project. Uh, you know, at what level uh, do you guys start getting involved? Do you start working with the schools earlier on or you yeah, only deal yeah. with them when they get to regional? How, how does it work? Yeah. Look, it's an it's a annual process. It starts at the beginning of the year. Some of them start the previous year. So the learners do a research project at school. Then they are judged at school. And if the teacher feels it is good enough, they enter it into a district level expo. If they win at a district expo, they then go on to one of 35 regional expos across all nine provinces. Mm. And the learners that you see here today are the brightest learners in the country who have won at the regional expo mm. and have now made it to the largest science fair on the continent and this is under one roof. The brightest kids in the country are here today. In terms of like judging criteria, what exactly um, are you looking for? Like the brief that goes out to the, to, the, to the students is that what is it they have to do? You're gonna be judged on one, two, three, four, five. What are those uh, key areas? The judging criteria, criteria focuses on the scientific research uh, process or if they're doing an engineering project, it's about engineering goals. What we're looking for is innovation. The learners don't replicate a project. It's been done many times. We see learners coming with really innovative ideas. And if we want to invest in our future, they are going to shape the future. So we need to see innovation coming out of them. So the, 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 they are judged by how brilliant is the project? What's the potential of it? And sometimes these projects go into production in the next five to 10 years. So they give us fantastic ideas at this level. Okay, so if the project is likely to go into production in the next five or 10 years, um, do you work through with the student? I mean, 37 years later, I'm sure uh, there's some alumni and, and highlights from the different years that you can say, we worked on something like this and this project is, is, is currently here. Can you just share some of uh, those uh, highlights? Yeah. Our focus area is, is in the schools. That's where our expertise lies. We try to link up with other institutions, especially universities. So they pick it up from here and universities are here mm. all the time. Mm. So they get these learners into undergrad studies and postgrad studies. Now I'll give you one example. Mark Shuttleworth was a participant here. He didn't win anything big here. Yes. But his ideas started here. That inquiring mind started here. Mm. And we all know where Mark Shuttleworth went. So there's many of these guys out there. And they're all over the world. Mm. Now, in terms of like what will be happening uh, here today, uh, can you take us through, if I come in here, what is that I'm going to see? Okay, I'm going to try and, and take some of our cameras uh, you know, in there because I think there's some exciting things that are on the floor. But yeah. what kind of things uh, are featured here at the Expo? 
The learners are, are going to show you um, one year's of work, very, very hard work. They are going to show you that they are absolutely confident in themselves, they know their project, and they're going to convince you that they are, or their project is absolutely astounding. And what is really good for us is these learners are confident. They take charge of their education. And they are the future scientists. Mm. So that's what you're going to see in the eyes of these learners. You're going to see a brighter future and a lot of hope in our system. Now, in terms of like um, the impact that you think uh, this project makes, firstly to the scientists themselves, the the, edu the educational um, a journey, and I think to innovation and science for us uh, uh, as a country, mm -hmm. how how do you, how great do you think is the impact? The fact that we're doing it for the past 37 years, it means that we're doing something right. We have got a lot of organizations, 34 organizations also working with us, investing in us. We've got every university in the country participating, sending judges, awarding bursaries, because they see the impact down the line. So it is a sustainable thing. And by having big companies like Eskom, Siemens, um, even SA Express is coming on board, FFS, they are saying, we, t we believe in what you are doing, and they are all joining hands to say, right, please take this further. Mm. So we're really doing the right thing, and we are having an impact. You also say that it's an international um, science fair. Um, how is that judged, and what, what is that informed by? Well, there's very, many, uh, many levels. So mm. this is the largest science fair on the continent. We cater for six African countries that are here mm -hmm. this week. We have countries as far as Brazil participating as well. Mm. So it's the only one of its kind. It's the largest on the continent. When the learners win here, we also select them to participate in other science fairs, starting from Taiwan in January, all the way to the West. Uh, we do two science fairs in the USA. We do many science fairs in Africa. Mm. So these learners don't just stop here. And it doesn't end just by going overseas. We had two learners that have won Harvard scholarships at Intel ICEF a few years ago. Mm. Sia Bulile Kusa is one of our outstanding uh, uh, candidates. Mm. So it opens up many doors, not just locally, but in other countries as well. So it's truly a global event. Now, the, the significance of making sure that the, these youngsters, you know, get to interact and I guess exchange ideas with other young people from um, other countries, especially, uh, you know, on the continent. Why mm. is that of importance? South Africa is taking the lead in this. Nobody's doing it. It's, 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 it's a beacon of hope for the continent in scientific research. The other thing is, Africans, we have to break down the borders. Mm. We have to share ideas, share innovations. Africa is a user continent. You know, we don't really produce anything that's a wow factor mm. that we export. Mm. This institution, this platform, creates that next wow factor. So as Africans, we can get the next genius coming out of here and having a product that we export that's going to create that wow factor. So we are starting to shift those goalposts and say, listen, we want to be competitive. We don't just want to be users. And this is where we start. But also there's a lot of like, um, you know, socioeconomic challenges that we have, I think, uh, as a country, as a continent. Yeah. And we hope that this uh, young scientists have solutions to some of current and future problems. Uh, because I guess as scientists, you can foresee some of the things yeah. that, uh, you know, generations will have to deal with. Does it expose our young people to that? We, co we constantly do that. Besides just informing schools about the expo and research and engineering, we send trainers into schools that were classified as under-resourced, or maybe the teacher is not uh, qualified enough to teach science. So we hire mentors across the country to spend time in that school to build up this kind of love for science at school level. Mm -hmm. So we are now going right down to grassroots level to make that difference. So the Minister of Science and Technology, she actually came to us to say, listen, I want you guys to make a difference at school level. level yeah. The Minister of Education has done the same. So we are now responding to that and making a difference right in the classroom.